Hello, Internet. I'm here with another RPG game video, finally. And uh, today I want to add cooking and crafting to the game. Uh, so this video is going to start a little bit differently. The base game doesn't have items, and we're going to need items in order to cook and craft. But that's okay. A previous video introduced items. In fact, the very last video, I really didn't plan that, and <laughs> it just worked out that way. Uh, and something I haven't shown is how you can easily uh, get the code for any particular point in the game. And if you know Git, you probably know this, and, and you've done this kind of thing before. But if not, I mean, these videos are ostensibly made for people who don't have a lot of coding experience. If not, let's go through it. So, uh, yeah, here's the code for the, the current game. This isn't going to do this isn't gonna do me any good. Let's go to GitHub, Ben Makes Games, RPG Game. And I'm going to clone a whole new copy of this thing. Uh, there's, so there's a couple ways we could do this. One, we could find the inventory thing in here, and then we could uh, download this way. But I actually kind of want to show a different way, just because, again, it's nice to know how to use these tools. So let's get just the base game. We'll get RPG game. Uh, and I'm going to do is a whole new project. So this is, again, I'm using Rider. Different interfaces are going to do different things. You can see all the crazy projects I work on and never finish. Um, so you can say get from version control, and again, this option is going to be in any IDE, not just writer. Uh, and then we just paste in that URL that, that we copied over here, right? Here it is. Paste. Now it's going to try and put it, interesting, so it's going to put it in C-sharp RPG game, RPG game. Uh, but I already have RPG game there. And <laughs> you can see RPG game copy. This is where if I want to kind of test out something uh, before making a video and then have the code up for reference, I'll, I'll work on that copy. Anyway, I can't have two things in the same folder. I'm, in fact, surprised it's even allowing this. Uh, it's possible that when I click clone, it will say, no, I can't do that. Uh, but I'm just going to say, like, with inventory or something, and make a whole new whole new folder for that. So let's do that. And I'll take a second to pop up. And of course, it pops up on the other monitor. Thank you. And you can see it has made now the folder RPG game with, with inventory. And now Rider uses ReSharper. That's the name of their whole, I don't even know what you would call it. Uh, code doodle under the hood. <laughs> you can get ReSharper add-ons for Visual Studio. Uh, but anyway, it's gonna, I don't know, take a sec here to start up. Um, it's a brand new project, so it doesn't have anything cached, so this can take a little bit. Oh, didn't take that long, actually. Um, here it's still blah blah blah, doing some other stuff. But we can go now. So up here, we have the same thing, and again, it's gonna be a little bit different if you're using a different IDE, but Rider has it up in the upper left here. I think on Visual Studio, on the right is where the files are by default, and one of the tabs, one of their, their little tabs on the right is for, uh, for version control. But I forget exactly, it's been a while. Anyway, we can scroll through here and get any of the ones we want. So here's inventory, and you just click, check out, and it's done. That was it. And we can confirm, right? I mean, it looks like nothing changed. <laughs> did, it, did it really work? Uh, so let's go into tables, and we should see that there is now an inventory. So we've done it. We have inventory in the game. Um, something else you can do, I won't go into it in this video, but if you're wondering something like, man, I wish I could combine inventory and growable things, there are ways to merge two of these branches. They're called branches. And that, by the way, is why this little icon, are, it's, it's kind of funny that time is going up. I'm used to thinking of time is going right, but as time goes forward, you can see like, like there's a little branch of, of a different version of the code. So that's what this little icon represents. Anyway, so these different branches, there are there is a way to combine them. I'm not going to get into it now. It's probably in here, like merge. Yeah, you could merge growable things into inventory. Depending on how far back you go and how many differences there are, you may run into more trouble. Like if you go all the way back to like switch to my, I don't know, added monies or whatever, this is before Pet Game became RPG Game. And when I renamed it to RPG Game, tons of things changed name. So, and it's not going to be able to figure that out. It's going to look at all those files and be like, there's this file and that file, blah, blah, blah. It's going to get confused. But you might be able to go back to some of these very previous ones and just say, yep, I want to merge that in, merge that in, merge that in. And then, and then you have it all. Uh, something you should do first, though, which we will do, we're going to make a new branch. Uh, so this is going to come off of the inventory branch. But I'm going to call this, um, I don't know, crafting. Crafting and cooking, let's call it. So now we have a brand new branch. Um, and here now, it would probably be better to say, okay, I'm going to merge. You know, I don't want to mess with the inventory branch. That's good as it is. But I'm going to merge in growable things, daily rewards, layer and pet graphics, whatever. You could do that. Again, I haven't tried that. There might be some conflicts. You might run into some fun trouble. You can Google all about Git, find YouTube videos. Um, 
YouTube videos are probably the most helpful, especially if you can get one for your IDE, because the interfaces are all a little different in how you resolve any conflicts that it comes up with. Like, there's ways to do it, and, and the IDEs make it really nice and, and, and slick. So, anyway, that's a topic for another time. What I want to do this time uh, is add cooking. But there is one more thing I want to point out, one more little danger of having multiple copies of RPG game is you may remember that these all connect to the very same database. Um, let's see where the database connection is. Ooh, I don't remember. Where do I keep that data? Oh, right. It lives in a file. So never mind. We don't have that danger with RPG game. So if you were using um, a more real database, if you installed Postgres, uh, I should really delete that MySQL branch and, and do Postgres, but man, it doesn't, it's fine. It's whatever. But anyway, if you were using a, a, a one database, you would have this issue where now you have two versions of the code, both talking to the same database, and if they have different tables, like this one has inventory, the other one doesn't, you could run into trouble there. So, I don't know. I don't think I need to say much more about that. You, you'll know if you're in that situation or not, and just be super careful, maybe make a second copy of the database, you know, copy for every branch, uh, because RPG game just keeps this database in a little file in its folder with, with a base game as it, as, it as it is released to you, we won't have that problem because they all have one in their own folder. So that's perfect. That's good that that is the case. Um, so let's run this. Let's run the inventory, RPG game with inventory, and verify that that's still working. I don't know why it wouldn't. It ought to work just fine, but let's check it out. Think, think, think. Are we getting somewhere? I think it's, I think it's ready. Okay. So this is a brand new database now. So this is maybe something else to think about with RPG game built as it is, where each copy has its own database and its own folder. Because I have a whole new folder here, it's a whole new database. So my existing account doesn't exist. So I'll just do b at b.com, or actually I'll do ben at ben.com and make my password ben at ben.com. It's just easier to remember that way. Assuming I typed it properly. <laughs> it's probably why I should ask you to enter it first. Uh, this would be my little guy, Roy. Or actually maybe I'll make... Now, nah, whatever, we'll just do little guy. I like the little guy. You know, it's pet game origins. All right, and it should be that if I explore, oh, perfect. I got some metal. Um, there's, it's not guaranteed that that'll happen. Yeah, I didn't find anything. Got some ash. All right, oops, out of energy, okay. So I'm just thinking, let's get ourselves some inventory. Let's get some meat maybe so that we can try some different recipes. I seem to be getting just metal and ash. There we go, got two meat, perfect. So now I've got all these items. Let's try and combine them. Uh, so let's start by coding some recipes. Think about the data structure structure for recipes, and then I'll work on the UI. And happily, we now have this wonderful menu, thanks to a, a previous, actually, I don't think I did that on a video. I forget. Uh, but anyway, so I'll add like a kitchen as another menu item or something where you go to do the cooking, list all the recipes and blah, blah, blah. So let's make some recipes. We go into player inventory, and sorry, let me zoom in the code here. Let's jump over to item type. So I'm going to do the little jump to definition there. Got the keyboard shortcut. This is familiar. Uh, so let's make some new things that you can make. These would be things that are only crafted. In fact, maybe you want to put some comments, raw materials, uh, crafted things. So I'm going to do a sword. Yep, sword is really good. We'll call that an, I don't know. Yeah, just sword. It's made with one, I will say, uh, one, one wood and one iron. We'll make you... Uh, sword. It's interesting. Wants to do axe. I'm gonna do grilled meat. I wonder if it'll uh, catch on. A meat in a wood. Yeah. Wow, ChatGPT. You you know how the world works and how we grill. Given the av available materials, that's the kind of stuff where I love these AI things. This is like, oh, you know a little bit about how the world works, and within the context of you know the items that I've I've made. So that's fun. And it, it added numbers. Great. Um, I don't think I want to keep. Um, these comments here, right? I mean, I just did this for, I mean, I don't know, maybe it's useful to have those comments there, but they might fall out of sync as we, as we change recipes. But we do want somewhere else to store all the recipes in the game. Uh, so I'm just gonna make, I don't know, I haven't thought about this in advance. Uh, there's some inventory helpers, that's interesting. Let's just make a, a whole new recipe thing. Um, I'll call it recipes. Uh, actually, let, let's call it, let's call it, let's do crafting helpers, why not? Uh, and this will store a list of recipes, and as I, I expect as we move forward, again, I haven't done this in advance yet, but we're probably going to need some functions to do the combining, check that you have the items and all that stuff. So we, we can leave those in here. 
Um, I'm going to make this be static. So let's make a list of recipes. So what is a recipe? A recipe is a list of ingredients and a thing you get out um, and maybe a name. So let's do this. Let's make a dictionary. I'm going to do a read only because this should never change during the course of the game. So I'm going to do everything in my power to be like, this dictionary never changes. This is the reference of recipes in the game, right? Don't mess with this. Um, so we'll have a recipe, some sort of ID for the recipe, basically. Uh, a name, an enum. I'm going to go with a name. We'll, we'll give them all names. And then we're going to need a couple things. So let's make a uh, record, perhaps, for recipes. It will be the list of items going in. So we'll have item type. Uh, and I guess quantities, right? So actually, it's going to be a dictionary. <laughs> if you haven't worked with dictionaries, actually, maybe this is looking kind of weird. Um, but go chat GPT for kind of knowing what I want. So a dictionary is a key value pair. I should probably explain these things more because, again, maybe these videos are for people who don't know programming. Um, a dictionary just keeps a, it's unlike a list. The list just has, you know, what's, it, what's in the zeroth position? It's the name Ben. What's in the first position? It's the name Abby. What's in the second position? It's Ian. Whatever. Um, a dictionary, you can have whatever you want as the key. So you can say the key is, I don't know, item type wood. And the value is three. And that's what we're doing here. We're saying here is the key, an item type, and here is the value, a number. So it's and, and similar to how you would write code where you would say, you know, suppose this is in some uh, a list of, of names. And then you might just say names one, and that will give you Abby. And if this is your list of recipes, then you would say uh, recipes, item type wood, and that would give you three. So it works very, it's, the syntax looks super similar to an array. Um, there's some other features of dictionaries that you can do. Um, you can check if a key exists without getting the value and, and other things, because this might not exist, right? What if you never made, um, with, a, with a list, it's very easy to know what are the values. Just say, well, how big is, are you, array? You know, dot count. Three, okay, then you go zero to two, done. But with, um, you know, maybe this is just strings as your key. And then you're like, well, I don't know what strings are in there necessarily. You can just pull that out. So there's slightly different functions you can call on on dictionaries versus lists but there you go so we're going to use a few dictionaries dictionary is handy for this we can say what's the type and what's the item uh, sorry the, the quantity and those are all your ingredients and then the same for what you get out what are you going to get out this many of of what item and we want it's important to think like what's going to be the key and what's going to be the the value you wouldn't want to switch these around because then you can only have these must be unique. You can't have two items and, you know, same as you can't have two zeroth positions in your list. There's only one zeroth position. If you have int here, well, then you can only use each int as the key once. So we wouldn't want the quantity to be there. That's all I'm saying. So anyway, uh, we're going to do the same thing here. We're going to say recipe, and then we're going to say this is recipes, and then this is dictionary. Yep. And if this looks a little weird, I should probably explain this a little more. So when we access this recipes now variable in other parts of the code, it's not going to give us the ability to modify it because we've said it is an I read only dictionary. Under the hood, it's actually a dictionary, which can be read and written to. I don't think there is a read only dictionary. Oh, there's just a read only dictionary. Never mind. That's a better idea then. Um, but it needs something. One parameter invoke with none. What does it need? I haven't actually used this thing. Maybe I'm finding out why. Aha, you have to give it a dictionary. <laughs> so you make a read-only dictionary out of another dictionary. That's why I haven't used it. So yeah, we're going to stick with just dictionary here. But again, people using the code, they don't get to know this part. They don't get to know the specific type, just this more generic type of I read-only dictionary. It's an interface. And you can read about interfaces if you haven't encountered them before. Um, but And I've also said it's read-only, so you can't reassign recipes to something else. So not only can you not reassign recipes, you also can't, because of this, you also can't modify its content because of this, and that will make it unmodifiable. And again, this is like, this is just a list of all the recipes in the game. We don't want to ever accidentally, like you as the developer, this isn't to protect you from like some weird hacking. This is just you as a developer. You don't want to accidentally write code that messes with these recipes. So don't, and maybe it is a hacking concern at some point. You know, I don't know, probably not for this, but if it's supposed to be read-only, make it read-only. Um, 
And, and that's also a signal if, to, to other developers if you're working on a team, like, hey, this thing doesn't change. So this is interesting. <laughs> GitHub Copilot. Uh, wow, beautiful. So it says a sword. It's a recipe. And you'll note we do ingredients and then results. So uh, here is the dictionary of ingredients. It's wood. It's iron. Um, we could probably make this also a read-only dictionary, by the way. I don't know that we really need to do that, but why not? So anyway, here's our dictionary. <laughs> It's wood and iron makes a sword, wood and meat makes grilled meat. I can't believe it knew that. That's fantastic. So yeah, this is our huge bananas list of recipes. As we make more of these, it might become a little more exciting. Um, another way to do this is to put it into a database. You don't have to store everything in a, di in a dictionary in code like this. This is just one way to do it. There are pros and cons to doing it this way. You might not want to do it this way for some reasons. Um, I'm just going to bring all this up on one line for these just to, I don't know, make things a little shorter. <laughs> um, but there are probably recipes that get so long you wouldn't want to do it this way. But anyway, if we wanted the sword, you know, maybe the sword is actually two wood and an iron, or maybe it doesn't need any wood. Maybe it's, I don't know, 50 iron, probably not 50 iron, but I don't know, however you want to do it. Um, and, you know, let's make one of the recipes a little more interesting just to demonstrate. So let's actually make it two iron and one wood. Um, I don't know, the wood is for heating it up and the iron is for the sword itself. I don't know. I'm thinking ahead a little bit to things we might do of um, show people how many they can make. And if we have more interesting numbers like this, it'll make that. We'll be forced to, to make sure the code is, is better by not just having everything be ones, right? Yeah. I don't know. I, I'm having trouble thinking off the top of my head, but I feel like if all the values are ones, we might accidentally make code that seems to work, but doesn't actually work when we use different numbers. So I'm just going to use different numbers here. Um, to make sure we, we do the right code later. Uh, so I don't know, we got sword, we got grilled meat, sounds good. As you add more items to the game, you know, I don't know, you add spices that pets can get, and you make spiced meat, or you make a spicy sword, why not? I don't know. Uh, you can come up with whatever recipes make sense for you. So we've got the recipes in the game. Let's display them in a place. Let's make a page. Again, I'm gonna make a kitchen uh, where you can see all of the recipes and whether or not you can make them. That's what we want to show you. Um, so let's make a new page. So pages, my house. Let's make a new page. I think Razor. No, I want to do Blazor. I want to do Blazor. Uh, this is going to be kitchen. That's where the page option was. It was on that little dialog that just went by. Oh, well. It's not hard to make it a page. You just do this. Eh. And the URL is kitchen. Pretty sure it starts with a uh, backslash, forward slash, rather. Yep. Sure does. Ooh, I'm really embarrassed that I said backslash. I know the difference. Um, so let's make this. This should also be authorized. It was kind of nice that I looked over at my house to remind myself of that. That was purely an accident. So if you don't have this attribute on the component, then even if you're logged out, you'll be allowed to hit that URL. All right. Once I log out, I shouldn't be able to go to my house. And I can't because I'm logged out. I want the same thing to happen for the kitchen. So when you want that behavior, you put this authorized attribute on it. This is provided by Microsoft. This is a Microsoft provided thing. It's not specific to pet game. So, or sorry, RPG game. Um, so you can find information. There's more things you can do with this if, if you're curious. Uh, you can Google that or yeah, you'll find the Microsoft's documentation. and They'll tell you everything. Uh, let's copy these things and we're gonna, well, maybe, let's see, well, how are we gonna wanna do this? Let, let's just copy this for now. Um, kitchen sounds good. Player info, yes. So I'm gonna want. Uh, okay, I'll do the code block. I kind of like. I prefer to have the um, code behind, but it's easier for me. So let's go to the bottom of my house. We're gonna want to get the current player, like we saw, right? We're gonna need to know who they are. We're gonna want a DB factory because we're gonna want to connect to the database, find their items to find out what they can prepare. So we're definitely gonna want those. So I might as well copy that. Let's go back over to kitchen. Uh, just pressing Alt Enter here to import these missing types, and it does them all for me. Wonderful, thank you. And let's just for now list out the recipes, just to confirm that we kind of have anything working, uh, and then we'll worry about seeing can you prepare the recipes. So let's do, I don't know, let's just do a thing. We'll say class equals recipes, and kind of thinking ahead, I might do like a grid, uh, like I've done with items, maybe we'll give it kind of a card look or something. Um, and show what goes in and what comes out. Ah, something like that. You'll need to choose a quantity too. 
I don't know. We'll figure it out. We can change the styling later. That's the great thing about styling. We don't have to commit to it right now. So we're going to have a list of recipes. And then for each, and we can go to the uh, crafting helpers. And we can get all the recipes, unless I did it wrong. Public crafting helpers recipes. Yeah, crafting helpers dot recipes. Oh, because I'm typing crazy. So we want for each, and this would be name and recipe, and the recipes. So since it's a dictionary, this is just a little bit of shortcut you can do to get both the key and the value out and call them whatever you want. So this is the recipe name. Uh, you can see it's a string. And then recipe is the type of the of the recipe. It's that recipe uh, record I made in the other file. I don't know why this, uh, writer here is saying that it's nullable. Maybe Visual Studio or VS Code does better. They are not going to ever be null. Um, if we look here, right, we haven't made these nullable. So it really, yeah, <laughs> that causes problems. So yeah, it really shouldn't be. I think it's just confused. Um, it, it doesn't know what it's saying. So let's put this in here and let's name each one. So we'll say, I don't know, here's the name of the recipe. And then we might loop over all of the ingredients. Yeah, let's let's do something like that. So let's say ingredients. And we'll say uh, results, I guess, or, or makes output, I don't know, however you want to label it. Uh, so I'll just do these as unordered lists. And we'll go for each recipe, or sorry, bar and these, as you might recall, are also, <laughs> yeah, thank you. So <laughs> GitHub Copilot filling in again. It's also a dictionary, I was going to say, so we will do the same thing. Get the ingredient and the amount out of ingredients, which we can say, or which we can see is ingredient, then amount. And here's what I'm talking about, right? From this point, from the point of view out here, it's an I read only dictionary. We can't mess with it. Even though under the hood, we always said new dictionary, new dictionary, new dictionary. It is a read writable dictionary, but that is not the interface that we have access to. We have this interface read only dictionary. So I don't know. Again, if you if you've seen this before, then you know, and you're not surprised. Um, let's do a little times. Uh, just because I'll look nice, it'll say four times whatever the ingredient name is. Uh, and we may recall that these things have a get name. Yep. So let me jump to definition here. So sorry, I said we may recall you would have to have watched the previous video about inventory, but I made these uh, extension methods for item types to pull out useful things like the name of the item or the uh, image. And that's useful. In this case, it's a little sillier. We're calling like wood is ash instead and iron is metal. But it's also useful for things like grilled meat. And in fact, we're going to want to add that here. Maybe I'll do that now. Yep, this is a perfect demonstration. So for sword, no problem. We would say sword. Uh, but for item type grilled meat, we want grilled space meat. And you're not going to, right, there's no way to put a space inside an enum. So if you just wanted to take the, the name and just output it straight to players, uh, well, too bad if you have any spaces. And you could do horrible, sneaky things and say, well, I'm going to have an underscore, and then I'm going to do string replace underscore with spaces. And you could do all these crazy things. Um, but there are other advantages, which I talk about in the inventory video, for why you would want to have something like this instead. Um, so I won't get into that with that right now. Uh, but like, here's, a, here's another reason. Um, well, what are you going to call the image? Is it always going to be the name followed by the SVG? I don't know. Are you going to need pads? Are you going to, here's something that you might want to do later. You might want to put this in like food, grilled meat or something. Um, you know, maybe you decide that you'd like to categorize your images a little bit. So they're not just all sitting in one huge folder with a thousand items, right? Break them up into, into folders. So, um, these sorts of things are, are, are why it's useful to have these kinds of, kinds of functions. Um, and since we did do dictionaries, something I alluded to in that inventory video, I'm pretty sure, is we could make a dictionary of item types and have all these properties, kind of similar to what we did for um, recipes here. And that's something I like to do when I have enums with a lot of data. We're, it's, we're really making a database in memory uh, rather than putting it in the database proper. Um, and the advantage in doing that is we don't have to hit the database. Database queries can be slow. We've talked about this like asynchronous, right? Every time like make sure it's async, we don't know how long the database communications are going to take. They are non-trivial compared to just look something up in code. That takes nanoseconds or something. So um, for data that never changes, like items, you're probably not going to be deleting and changing uh, items all the time. Uh, it is useful. There is an advantage to keeping it all in code rather than I'm rambling, I'm getting off point. 
Um, we have these images. I'll come back and maybe make those images later. Uh, but let's go back to the kitchen and do the same for output. I wonder if GitHub Copilot will complete this for me. Almost. So I said output. Interesting. So it did dot output, but we actually called it results in uh, the code. So darn GitHub Copilot, you required me to write the tiniest amount. <laughs> I know it's still great. I still love that. Um, okay, let's rerun and log in. We don't have a way actually to get to the kitchen. I need to make a link. So I'm going to search for my house because I don't remember where I left the link and apparently I left it here. Uh, yeah, let's confirm. Nav menu drop down. That sounds right. So I'm going to put a link to the kitchen. Uh, I don't have an image for the kitchen, um, but maybe we'll make one. restart. It's easy enough to make it. I might as well do it now that we have the menu. So much easier than in the past. Oh, now it's opening it in a different browser. How weird. Um, refresh. Uh, all right. It doesn't know who I am for some reason. So let's do ben at ben.com. Ben at ben.com. All right. And if we check the little menu, great. We have a kitchen. And here are the ingredients. A sword has or needs one ash and two metal and it gives you a sword grilled meat ingredients blah this isn't the best layout obviously there are probably some other things we could do here um maybe this should be uh, a header or something i'm kind of curious can i do apply changes for once um looks like of course not no apply changes never wants to work for razor it's so funny i feel like again it was working for a brief time works with mono game it's gonna work with mono game i don't know i don't know anything uh, let's go to the kitchen again. All right, sword. Here's the ingredients. Here's the output. Grilled meat. Here's the ingredients. Here's the okay, we did something. We probably want more than this, but let's make it so you can prepare these things, uh, and also have it tell you can you prepare this thing. So we'll put a button at the bottom. I'll start with just making one at a time. Um, and actually, let me see how long the video is because, as always, oh man, we're already almost at thirty minutes. So I might not get to quantities. I was talking about doing quantities. Uh, but I really like to keep the videos to like 30 minutes if possible. I keep making one hour videos. Um, so anyway, let's make a button. Uh, and we'll make a button down here. Or no, we won't. Sorry, not down there. We'll do it at the bottom of output. Sorry. After we list the name, we do the ingredients, right? The idea is we'll have make. Make. Uh, and again, you could arrange these in a better way. And maybe I'll do at least a little bit of styling. But anyway. Uh, on click, we're going to want to call a function. So we're going to want to do, we'll call it like do prepare. And we'll give it the thing that uniquely identifies the recipe, which is the name, right? That's what came out of this recipe thing. So here's the name. And we'll call this make. I don't know. Do it. Make it. <laughs> I don't know. Call it whatever you want. Um, Yep, that'll do. So let's go here. We'll make our public async, as I was just talking about. Always make it async. Um, not always, always, but you know, mostly. Uh, and this is the recipe name that you'll be given. So here's where we'd like to do a little bit of validation and make sure that the recipe name is real. So you can say, uh, we'll say, uh, how do we want to do this? We want to do recipes, or sorry, crafting helpers, recipes. And we want to try get value. That's the one. So again, maybe the recipe name that came in is incorrect for some reason. It's probably not going to be, but we don't know. We should always be as cautious with the code as possible. So the key is this recipe name. And then we want to get something out, and that will do. Oops, Copilot, why'd you go away? Yep. Out of our recipe. And you could say recipe. The thing that's going to come out is a recipe. Um, oh, but it might be null. We might not find the recipe, right? So we can just say var here. And we also can say if you didn't succeed at getting the value, then we're going to return. Now I don't know, does recipe know that it's not null? I think it does. It does. Wonderful. Okay, the that's interesting of the compiler. Um, whatever, some weird things are going under the hood there that were mildly surprising to me, but that's okay. So we have a recipe. Um, if it didn't find it, right, we're just going to get out of here. I don't know what happened. You came to do prepare somehow the wrong recipe name come in. I don't know. Just get out of here. Uh, but if it did succeed, then we're going to have the recipe in this little variable recipe. And we can do things like 
make sure the player has all the ingredients. So that's where we'll use um, the database. So, oh my gosh, yes, GitHub Copilot, that will do. Uh, only thing I would protest is it should be async. So I did a little alt enter shortcut there. I think it's control dot in Visual Studio, by the way, it's alt enter in writer. Uh, use async overload, that's what I wanna do. We should be doing everything async, as mentioned. Also, we really wanna do using, and when you do using, you can do await using. Using, by the way, this keyword tells uh, the function, or yeah, tells, tells the code, the runtime, whatever. Uh, when this function is done, because we've declared this at the function level, it's gonna automatically clean up. When, when we say using, it'll automatically clean up this database connection. That means disconnecting, uh, I don't know, doing some other little things. I don't know what other cleanup it has. Maybe it finishes transactions, probably not. I don't know, but it's gonna clean up the database connection for you. If you leave the using off, that's okay, but you have to remember to uh, clean it up yourself with, with Dispose. Um, so whatever, use using, and then you don't have to remember to do that. And then I actually don't totally know why, but apparently when, you're, when you've got using, you can do that asynchronously too? That's a little surprising to me. I don't, maybe if I looked under the hood, I'd be like, oh yeah, that makes so much more sense in retrospect. I don't know, that's mildly surprising to me, but whatever, there it is. Player we don't need. What we want to do is find all the inventory that belongs to this player uh, and make sure they have it. So I'm just going to remind myself what the table looks like. Oops, sorry, what the database look like. All right, it's called player inventories. And if we jump to player inventory, we can see owner ID, type, quantity. That's perfect. So what we're going to do, we're going to find all the ingredients. So we'll say like available ingredients equals we're going to wait for the database. We want player inventories where a couple things. That's one thing. We do want the owner ID to be the current player. Absolutely. We don't want to fetch someone else's <laughs> inventory. That would be bad. We also want to find kind of, we want the item if we have it. Is it type? Yep. Item type is type. All right. So we want the type to be in the list of recipe ingredients. So let's actually get um, ingredients as a list. Uh, so this would come from recipe.ingredients. And here's another thing. I was talking about how dictionaries have some more things you can do with them than lists. Uh, one of the things you can do is say, get me all of the keys. And that is going to be, I'll turn this into a list. That is going to be, um, the key item type. So we now have a list that contains all the item types. And those are the only ingredients we care about getting from the player database, right? I don't want to look up, I don't want to pull out every item. If you've got hundreds or thousands of items in your game and you come in here and you say, I don't know, just give me all of them. That could be a really slow operation. Again, the database takes time. So be nice to your database. Don't load more than you need. It's also just more memory usage. So if you're, you know, you host this someday on, on an Azure server, and your memory usage blows up every time someone's preparing a recipe, you pay for that with real dollars. Um, so I don't know, sometimes you can worry about that too much and over-optimize. This, this is a reasonable thing to optimize. We're expecting to have lots of items in the game. We definitely don't need to get them all. I guess be a little more cautious when you're, once you're going to the database. Um, I don't know, rules of thumb. Uh, so ingredients contains this type. So that's the other condition we're going to say. So let's, let's recap. We want all the inventories and actually let me get, uh, finish up the job here. Okay. We're going to the player inventory. We want to find all the inventory owned by the current player. If you've been following along with pet game and or RPG game videos, this is super familiar to you. Uh, if not, just know that that's what does it. And then the other thing is we want this list of ingredients to include or contain the particular, you know, the, the, the type of item that, that we're looking up. So that's going to restrict uh, to only the items that are part of this recipe, the ingredients that are part of this recipe. Now we're going we're gonna to want to do a little check. We want to go over all the ingredients and make sure that you have enough. And if you don't have enough, then, I don't know, we can pop up a message. I think we, yeah, we've got a dialogue for that now. Um, but if they do have enough, we'll make them. So anyway, let's do that. So we can say for each uh, ingredient in ingredients. So these are the needed ingredients. And in fact, I feel like I want to rename that ingredients is going to become, it's already a little, uh, ambiguous. So let's rename this to, uh, required ingredients or something, not to be confused with the ingredients that you have available. Right. So I don't know. Uh, and then we'll rename this to, whoops, refactor, rename. Oh, right. There's rename as well. 
Uh, so we'll call this uh, required ingredient. Oh, I didn't need to do a refactor for that. It's not used anywhere else. So the advantage of doing the refactor, I think you saw it, renamed all three cases. This is a brand new variable not used anywhere else. So I didn't need to bother with the refactor, but whatever. Okay, so we want to find that the player has enough. Or rather, we want to find if they don't have enough. So we're going to say if in the available ingredients, uh, yeah, there, there isn't any where the type is the ingredient type, uh, and the quantity is greater than or equal to, yes, this is looking right, the recipe ingredients, required ingredients. So <laughs> this is getting a little, a little exciting. So, you know, actually, there's another way we could do this that maybe would make it make a little more sense. So we know the recipe. We can say required ingredient and required quantity. That might make a little more sense. Um, why does it say that's enumerable? In recipe. Isn't this the kind of thing we're doing all the time? Recipe is of type. Oh, sorry, right, it would be uh, recipe ingredients. Uh -huh. Okay, so of the ingredients, we have the required uh, ingredient and the required quantity. Again, this is a dictionary of ingredients and quantities. We saw us looping over things like this before. And now this code will look a little nicer because we can just say if there aren't any of the required type and with enough quantity, then we need to get out of here. Then the player doesn't have enough stuff. So we're just gonna break out of this function. And let's also show them something. Um, so I believe we have a dialogue alert. Let me see how this is opened. Yep, we have an alert.show and we pass it all this fun stuff. So let's do that. We'll say alert.show. It needs an iModal service. That's a service, which means we have to inject it. I'm just gonna go to my house and copy. I didn't notice, I happened to notice it there, but didn't think I was gonna need it at the time. So I didn't copy paste it, but that's easier than typing it out again. Um, so yeah, let's give it the modals. And then it wants a title. So we can say um, missing ingredient. And then we can say something like, um, uh the recipe oh yeah look at that okay the recipe requires ingredient but you only have so you might not even have any so yeah that's trying to do like a crazy lookup oh wow actually that did a really crazy lookup okay github copilot did a really cool thing um so <laughs> it's finding the first matching ingredient by the required ingredient but first their default if it doesn't find anything returns null and then it's doing a bunch of fun null coalescing stuff that probably looks extra fun. If you want to keep this code, feel free to keep this. I mean, maybe I should scroll over this again. This was a lot. This is a very long message <laughs> to all put on one line. Um, but uh, yeah, this will get the whole thing. I I'm inclined to just say, but you don't have enough. I was just going to do that. The thing that GitHub Copilot wrote, though, is certainly a nicer user experience, just a little bit. It's like that little extra touch, a little extra polish. So how, how nice of GitHub Copilot to make the polish even easier. Um, and I don't know, for consistency with myself, I'll put a little times. Oh, right, that won't, that we, we can't do HTML elements in there. Um, I don't know, an X. There are other ways you could go, okay, I'll do it. I want the times symbol, multiplication sign. Yeah, can I just, can I just like copy it? Wait, lowercase X. No, oh, here we go. Here it is. This one. Eh, give me. All right. That's how we'll get the time symbol in there. So there we go. Uh, a little bit of stubbornness. All right. And that little extra polish. Um, okay. The recipe requires this many of that ingredient, but you don't have enough. And we'll just say that. Um, otherwise, however, you do have enough. And here's where we want to do what this is doing. So that's interesting. So... It's going through the ingredients and saying, I'm gonna find available ingredients, the matching one, and subtract off the quantity. That is what we're gonna to wanna to do. So this, so again, let's remind ourselves, we've looked up the, the ingredients from the inventory table in the database. We've got that. We can change it and save it. And that's what we wanna do. We wanna reduce these. And that's what this is doing down here. And it's doing it in kind of a fun way. <laughs> it's saying, I'm gonna pull out the available ingredient here and reduce its quantity. Um, I'm actually surprised surprised can we not do like quantity minus equals yeah we can that's another way to do it that's 
I don't know, is that more or less readable? That's, I'll leave that for you to decide. Uh, the other thing we're going to want to do now is add um, those items in. It looks like that's what this is doing. So this is looking to see if you have the item. But I think we've already made something to help us with that. It's called inventory helpers. So here's this collect item async. We can do that instead. And that already does that same work that it was doing of like check the inventory. Does it exist? If it doesn't, right? If you've never had one before, add it. Otherwise, remove it. So we can just leverage that, right? Let's call this function collect item async. So we'll do var result in quantity. I'll let it autocomplete, but I don't actually want any of this. I'm going to say inventory helpers. Whoops. Collect item async, right? We're going to need to wait. It needs a database. It needs a player ID. It needs item type, which is the result. And it needs a quantity, which is the quantity. So there you go. Oh, sorry. And it's not player ID. It is this doodle, player info ID. All right. So that'll give the player all the items they're supposed to have. Um, and then I'm actually curious, does this do a, yeah, adds into the database. Great. So, oops, sorry. I closed and it took me somewhere crazy. All right. Now we can save. <laughs> We can save changes. Save changes async. Again, let's make it async. And then the function wraps up. And as mentioned, that'll do some extra cleanup on the database. So I think after all this work, I think we've got it. Um, let's rerun and test this thing. This doesn't do any checking as to whether you can do the recipe up front. I might um, leave that as an exercise for the viewer. We already have a function here that can find out, right? You can take this code out and call this you know, check for inventory. In fact, maybe I'll do that on, on the, this, this video just to show. Uh, but let's try making a sword. I, I don't remember how much metal we have. Ooh, it'd probably be nice to have a, a result that tells you congratulations, you did it. Um, but let's go to my house. And I have a sword. It doesn't have a graphic, but there you go. Um, so if I make, let's, let's make to meat, and then I should be out of ash. And then if I try to make another sword, it should tell me I don't have enough materials rather than let me go negative or something. So let's go to the kitchen and make two grilled meat, grilled meat, grilled meat. And now let's try to make a sword. It says it requires ash, but you don't have enough. And this should say the same thing, really. So it didn't matter which one I tried. Go back to home. Excellent. We've got sword and grilled meat. Uh, unfortunately, that's happening. That could use some little styling cleanup there. Um, that's I think that's almost it for the video. I am going to do that little bit of refactor I mentioned, but I'm at 42 minutes. I'm not going to go through, you know, I don't know, making it so it checks. It'd be nice to, to maybe style these a little different, but I'm going to leave that all up to you. Sorry about that. The video took too long, but I do want to take some of these functions out. So I mentioned how we have this crafting helper and gosh, wouldn't it be nice if it had some useful functions in it, like maybe preparing a recipe. Uh, this function in particular will be useful for you. You'd probably want to call it to say like, don't list this recipe because you don't have the ingredients or list it, but show, I don't know, show it in red or, you know, don't include the make it button, all those kinds of things. But you'd want to be able to call this function, but you don't want it to show the modal every time, right? That would be weird. So let's copy this and go over to crafting helpers and I'll make a function for this. So we're going to call this public static bool. Uh, can make. I don't know what the parameters are going to be just yet, but we're going to find out. Um, so it looks like I didn't do enough parentheses. So we want to be given a recipe. Can you make a recipe uh, given some ingredients? So this is available ingredients. This is just a list. Yeah, a list of player inventory. Interesting that it wants to do I enumerable. I guess that's fine. So. What is it mad about? Oh, I've. Did I accidentally copy something weird? Oh, was that GitHub Copilot finishing something for me? Oh, GitHub Copilot. Okay, so we can take out this. <laughs> what we really want to know is if we got anywhere in here, that's false. This is true. This says possible and multiple enumeration. Yeah, that's what I thought. I don't think we want to operate on an I enumerable. We want to do a list here. Um, and I think we can, can we turn this into fancier link? I don't know. Maybe we can, but that's okay. There's not a reason to get too fancy. So let's leave it at this. This is a little function that tells us, can you make a res recipe given the following available ingredients? And now we can reuse that. Um, so if we go back to 
uh, our kitchen. And we will just say, if you can't, uh, can make this recipe with your available ingredients, then we want to show this modal and GTFO. So we'll do that. Uh, oh, required quantity. Interesting. Um, oh, right. Uh, no, never mind. That's fine. So it would be recipe. Um, this recipe requires. Interesting. So this was a little different. It used to, um, because it was inside here, it knew which ingredient there wasn't enough of. We can do that same thing. We could make some sort of result object if we wanted to. Maybe I'll do that. I feel kind of bad making this less cool, but I want to show how you could do this. So yeah, let's say we still want to have this information uh, available. Then let's make some sort of crafting result object or can make result. Let's call it that. So we'll make a sealed record can make result. And we'll have a bool can make. Um, so you can just check that. And then we would have item type and we would call it this ingredient. Yep and int um, quantity required or something. Okay, so now instead, we'll have this return a can make result. And if you can make it, then we just do can make result, and it's true, and this can be null and null. We don't need the other, the other things. If that looks a little weird, I agree that does. You're like, what does null mean? What does null mean? You could make other things, and maybe there's ways to do this, so let's do it. Public static. <laughs> Read only. We'll have a can make result called uh, I don't know uh, can make. I guess no, that conflicts. Yeah, uh, we'll call it okay. Um, so that would be true null. So now what we can say is return can make result okay. So this is you can make it. An advantage to doing this, by the way, is now there, it's always the same okay thing. Um, so. I don't know. It's a mild memory savings. It's like not even going to matter. But that's a that's a I don't know. If you that's a good little trick to have in your back pocket. It really doesn't matter here. But if you're going to return the same object over and over and over again, there is some performance gain. But, but you you'd really have to be like in a loop doing this tens of thousands of times or something. So it really doesn't matter for this case. Um, but if it's false, right? It doesn't work. We can say uh, here's a can make result. Nope, it's no good. And we can give the missing ingredient and the quantity. So here's the ingredient you're missing. Here's the quantity. And now when we come out here, we can say uh, this is our can make result, I guess. <laughs> and we'll say if the can make result, if we can't make it, right? If that can make thing is no good, then we can check out the uh, missing ingredient and the and make result the uh, quantity. Oh, sorry, and I did that backwards. That should be the quantity. That should be the ingredient. Okay. So there we go. Missing ingredient. What? Oh, because it's nullable. Hmm. Well, we know it's not going to be null. That's a thing. Another way we could have done this, if you remember the. Um, I'm not super pleased with that, and that's why it's making me think this. So if you remember how we interacted with the database, or sorry, with the um, dictionary before, we said try get value. That's another thing you could do in, in outputs, right? Recipe. That's something else you could do where you um, you output. You could say var out the can make result, and maybe this does still return just a boolean, but you get more details here. So that's another way that you could you could do it, and that would prevent us from needing these nulls here. If you want to look into how to do that, I'll leave that to you. Again, the video is getting long. Let's confirm that this still works and that we are still prevented from making things we can't, uh, but not from making things we can. We want to make sure that both are working. So let's go to the kitchen. I shouldn't be able to make either of these things. Requires an ash, but you don't have enough. If we go back to my home and let's explore and see if we can get some more of anything. We're really needing wood this time. Didn't find anything, didn't find anything. I got so lucky the first time. Got a metal. Getting something quote unquote rad. Oh no, he's out of energy again. Ah, it's gonna take forever. Don't find metal, neat. Metal. I mean, we could also cheat and make a new recipe, but that's going to take longer. No, give me ash. Ah. Okay. Um, I really have to make sure it still works. I'll feel terrible if I release this code and like I actually actually broke it and you can't. Um... This is where unit tests come in. 
Uh, maybe I should do a video about that. Wow. I really got so lucky when I did this at first, didn't I? All right. Where's Heidi? Um, I'm just going to look at the database and uh, I really should have that now. I don't know. I like the portable install. Pros and cons. Heidi. So we're going to need a new connection. Is it session? I guess it's called session. Um, and we want a SQLite database and we're going to need to find the file. Interesting, it put me like in the middle of nowhere. So this is RPG game, RPG game with inventory. Sorry. Here it is. Great. Get in there. It's fine. All right. Player inventories. Show me the data. Uh, quantity zero. Yeah, give me like 10. I don't know. All right. View my house. Great. I have enough ash. <laughs> Let's go and try and make something. And it works. We're getting the Again, it'd be nice if there was a message, and now I have finally run out. Perfect. Okay, so there you go. We have a recipe system. I wanted to keep it under an hour, and it's 50 minutes, and I said I wasn't going to do other things to keep it shorter, and I failed. I'm sorry. Um, but I really wanted to show that little refactor. So pros and cons. Uh, I didn't draw any item graphics for you today. Sorry, we're kind of missing graphics. I'll leave that to you. But we have a crafting system. What are you going to do with these items? Again, that is up to you. Uh, perhaps in the near future, I will make a uh, update where we can feed items to pets or maybe even equip them with these swords. I don't know. Um, and maybe not pets. Maybe it's your priestess or space marine, depending on which uh, theme you went for for your character, right? What is your RPG game? So anyway, thank you very much for watching. Uh, and without further ado, goodbye.